My name is Jared Gross and I'll be taking you through the highlights of Digital Concrete 2020. It's an event that focuses on innovation and the future of concrete as it relates to the construction industry. My name is Theo Voogd, I'm the Innovation Manager of Braille. Braille is a mid-sized company uh, based in the Netherlands on 13 locations. We get in digital concrete printing because in 2013 and 14 the Netherlands were in a deep crisis and we as a traditional concrete company had to innovate. So in 2015 we started to develop our own 3D printing technology as well as the hardware, the software and the dry mixture. Everything that we cover in this video will fall into one of three categories, either material, printer or design. Material, the design and the printer needs to come together. It's more or less a complex system that has to fit together and make a full set a system as such. If you look at everything through that lens, then you have a much better chance of understanding this on a deeper level. Right now we're in Teugen, near the small airport of Teugen, where local business owners Arvid and Mario wanted a small, circular meeting room. My name is Marijn Bruus, I'm working at Witteveen & Bos. We've been involved in many 3D concrete printing projects around the world, one of which is the RN Drone Laboratory in Dubai, and we operate the largest gantry printer in Southeast Asia with our team in Singapore. There's still too many people needed to build infrastructure, to build buildings around the world, and those people are not available anymore and don't want to work in construction anymore. That's why we need to make it more appealing for young people like me to work in construction. The second reason is sustainability. The construction industry is responsible for around 40% of CO2 emissions around the world. With digital concrete, we can use smarter materials and we can use less material. Architect Pim van Wielik of the Form Foundation designed this meeting room in such a way that from the sky it looks like a vortex created by an airplane. This is why all the walls in this meeting room are double curved. With the freedom of shape that 3D concrete printing offers, the architect started designing. So here are two processes used to create uh, column structures. Both use extrusion. One uses a very stiff mortar, capable of withstanding significant self-weight as the layers are stacked up. And the other pumps a thinner mix uh, to the nozzle and then accelerates it at the point of extrusion. As you can see, the material on the left is only able to print straight up so that it can support itself. But the material on the right with the second accelerant material is able to print horizontally because the accelerant makes the concrete hard and fast enough for it to support itself. The first category is extrusion of stiff materials, similar to conventional extrusion. The ideal case of this category is the infinite brick extrusion regime where the filament and the nozzle cross sections are equal. The second category is the extrusion of flowable material, usually with addition of an admixture or admixtures. Most extrusion flows are, however, located somewhere in between these two cases, which makes their description more complex. These macro categories don't really show the true range of the materials people are building with. Joining us now is Virginia Sanfordello. The company that owns the salt crystallizers in the Bay has more recently given 16 and a half thousand acres of land to the government for wildlife redevelopment. And an additional 1400 acres has been set aside for a residential development of 12,000 homes. And so we imagined uh, the possibility of bringing salt and, get, and glue together to kind of make a, a salty glue, if you will. Uh, we were really inspired by these domes and baskets that were originally used. And we imagine using salt to define interior spaces, such as bedrooms and bathrooms, spaces that require privacy, but would also benefit from the faint glow of dispersed light into the interior. There's a ton of different materials that people are using with this technology. Dune sand, fly ash, iron rich slag, foam infused concrete, nano silica, nano clay, and also fibers made of wollastonite or polypropylene. All of these different combinations of materials have different material properties 
And so it's important that people understand these properties deeply before making buildings out of them. You have a mortar that doesn't harden immediately, but that has an open time of about 90 minutes. It's much more easier to get a monolithic structure. Brew extrusion is the most common extrusion technique. Material is continuously fed here into the extruder barrel, wherein the Archimedes screw conveys towards the die. This works best for progressive cavity pumps, which have been used in the context of concrete 3D printing in order to stabilize extrusion flow. This photograph uh, shows the uh, different type uh, of printers. Here you can see a variety of viable printers. Many have been custom fit for special uses, like this one for GE that they built to make the basis for wind turbines. This is an adjustable form that's capable of making many different shapes and sizes of concrete columns. This is actually a huge savings for companies that have to store many different forms because that takes up a lot of space and can be very costly to build and maintain. So is it an on-site in-situ placement of material or is it an off-site factory-based process for part manufacture? So there's a big discussion obviously in concrete printing, do you print in-house or do you print on the job site? And there's a lot of demand in the market now for solutions on-site to do high-rises, to do building projects, understandable. The big advantage of printing indoors is obviously climate control and control of other factors. We started a cooperation with the five parties and it's very special that we now have the permit to build the first three-day concrete printed house. The design of the houses is made by Hube van Mierlo architecten. There are big stones, meniers from Asterix and Oblix, and they are landed in this field. We are using a parametric model and we made the design of the house in it and also it's the structure of the house. So we can send it to the robot and we can print with it. For this project, we don't use a steel wire in a concrete element. We have a special design of our house and we made a structure that we don't need a steel wire. On the left hand side, an example that you print an inner and an outer wall and you connect them, for instance, with the snake kind of thing eh, that we uh, see very often in 3D printing and extrusion process. Now, what you can see on the right hand side is a first try for the fill in, but imagine that that fill in material could also be used for structural purposes, taking care of the shear capacity of the wall. Then you can cut down on the amount of concrete that you actually print. While Project Milestone opts not to use metal supports, most companies do, either in the form of little metal fibers or potentially screws. Some companies use rebar and other companies print a wire in each layer of the concrete, adding to its structural security. You can see a map of all the different places structural concrete printing has happened. Projects where the printed concrete is not a structural component of the building, like it's a facade or just there for looks, are not included in this list. In the last three weeks, we've started printing again. We are attempting to make a larger structure. What you see here are the foundations of a house, an unnamed house that is currently being fabricated. It is about eight meters long and will ultimately be around four meters high. Robot extruding uh, the clay. Again, we're using the inner and outer coils. And you can see there are three rooms. Here are the ideas that we're making. A first room that will be a sleeping room. A second room, which will be a living room. It has a hearth and 3D printed mud benches. And then this third room has a sunken bath and will be a bathing area. About a month ago, I had the unique opportunity to check out the Emerging Objects print site where they built all these dirt and straw structures. It was really cool to see the work done by Virginia Sanfratello and Rafael Real on the big stage of the Digital Concrete 2020 conference. The next presenter is another familiar face from the Automate Construction podcast. 
So we are absolutely 100% involved in parametricizing of the process. So even in the design, we hoped to be able to realize things that are, for example, your topology optimization or your optimization of your design to start with. Then parametricizing them is a revolution in the construction industry with the digitization as well and the BIM, of course. We want to follow these steps. So we're able to take a parametricized model directly translated in, for example, a Rhino program to the code, to the rapid code, to the robot code, and produce in one sweep. Smash the YouTube algorithm for the like button and click subscribe. If there's a topic you'd like me to go into more detail on, you can let me know in the comments below and I'll try to address it in a different segment. Well, uh, my friend here, the unicorn balloon and myself, uh, we really enjoyed the conference.